Today we're going to be talking about the differences between the radius arm and three link front suspension setups and why I changed my mind. Welcome back to the build vlog guys today we're going to be doing something a little bit different we're going to dive into suspension theory first the astute among us would notice i'm not in my shop uh this is my office this is kind of where i sit most days when i'm not building stuff or shooting videos out in the shop um, i also help my wife out with her youtube channel books and keyblades um, so if you guys or anybody you know is into uh, books or gaming um, i'll leave a link below so you guys can check her channel out and I would really appreciate you guys supporting her and what we're doing with that channel. So initially I set up my Colorado with a radius arm. The uh, driver's side was a radius arm and the passenger side was a single link. It rode great. Um, I didn't mind how it rode at all. But uh, inherent to that suspension setup, you get what's called caster gain. So if I hit a bump and the truck rose and the axle went down, there was a chance that I would get into a caster positive situation. Think of a wheel on a uh, shopping cart. As you get into a positive caster situation, that tire has now new forces that'll pull it one way or the other. So if you're going along and you hit a bump or hit a dip or hit a anything and you are on a turn, now that tire is really being pushed to one way and you can fold that tire or you can um, completely destroy your front suspension. Um, in the right or wrong situation. My initial consideration was to have the drive shaft pointing at the transfer case at all times. The radius arm allowed me to do that with a double cardan style drive shaft and uh, basically no matter where I flexed that axle should effectively be pointing at the transfer case at all times. The issue of the caster gain kind of weighed on me over the last years and months thinking about it and I thought, you know what, if I'm going to do this with 40s and if I'm going to uh, change some of this stuff, I'm going to go bigger, beefier, stronger, and I'm going to change my mindset a little bit. And that's what I did with the three link instead of the radius arm. So I'm going to tear out the radius arm setup and install a third link um, to the axle. What that allowed me to do is go to a standard drive shaft where as the suspension cycles, the pinion effectively will keep relatively the same angle as the transfer case. So on road, if I'm bouncing around, I should have a pretty good angle on the drive shaft anyway. Being a high pinion, probably not going to flex it out too far. Being almost 40 inches long, um, I've got a pretty good chance of not ever hurting that drive shaft. What I want to know is with this program, where do I put that link? Do I make it 70% of the lower link's length? Do I set it up um, higher or lower to have a, a uh, link separation at the axle at 10 inches or less or greater? We'll figure that out with this program. So when you click the link below and you download this uh, Excel file, you will get um, this cool little table and, and graph and stuff like that. And you start plugging in your variables. So what mine will say will be different than yours 100% of the time. So wheelbase, we just pulled tape on it yesterday. I'm at 130.5. That's four and a half inches of stretch between stock at 126 and where I'm at now. Uh, tire diameter, 40. Tire rolling radius. Uh, that needs to be somewhere in the like probably 19 inch realm um, so you guys can see the uh, the tire uh, shape change the, the bottom's a little bit flatter obviously with the weight of the truck squishes the tire a little bit changes the rolling radius so I'm gonna set up my sprung mass center of gravity at 42 inches um, 
that's somewhere in the the area just a little bit above the crank on the motor um, a lot of guys will say like the top bell housing bolt or the crank uh, center so give or take that's about where I'm at so the weight of the truck won't really change us a whole lot but um, I'm gonna put 5500 it'll probably be more than that once I finish the flatbed and canopy and all that fun stuff so I've set the upper link you guys can see here the upper and lower links have the same specs the same spatial specs because that's just how they sit you see 25 there 25 there that's the same height on the frame but the axle size is a little bit different so the axle separation is about what seven inches right there 26 and 19 so I only had seven inches of axle separation on the 37 so the table gives us a anti squat value that's for the rear axle we're doing a front axle therefore it's an anti dive number basically when the truck is accelerating the axle is rotating in such a way that it's going to pull the front of the truck down um, that's great if you want a lot of traction the problem is when you're not and you're just cruising along it will not resist bumps as much and will actually kick um, a lot of that force up into the truck so we want that anti-dive number to be a lot lower closer to 100 really um, than the 180 that I've got here. Under acceleration, the nose of the truck will come down. Under braking, the axle will push the truck up. So that's not good. Any resistance will cause the suspension to push the vehicle upwards. So if we can lower that anti-squat or anti-dive number being the front axle, we'll get a more desirable driver characteristics on the road and on the trail hope this helps you guys out kind of get an idea as to where your links ought to go and then packaging is always going to be your constant um, you can't put a link somewhere that your oil pan is going to sit or that you know you have to run your exhaust you can't just run your exhaust around the link typically so uh, be mindful of the different constraints be mindful of the couple kind of constants and rules that you need and then uh, weld accordingly I've got a piece of PVC in the uh, U-joint straps and that was partially to help me just set pinion angle when I start to remove everything but also it kind of shows me the angle of the pinion when we flex this out so I'm going to set the camera down and show you guys how this is going to look or at least how the radius arm will change the pinion angle change while you flex it out and while it's dropping so let's set the camera down and I'll show you guys that now. You guys can see that this changed quite a bit. As I was saying, this axle went down, this pinion went up, and now I am positive camera. My my kingpin angle is like over here. So um, yeah, not ideal, but um, this is uh, gonna have to change because uh, I'm so close with this. With more lift, I'm closer to the end of my caster angle. So um, let's get this back up on the stand and I'll throw the link in and then we'll flex this out again once that third link is in and this radius arm's undone and I'll show you guys the difference. So I got the uh, radius arm disconnected, you guys just saw that, and then uh, I got the three link now in intact. Um, if I don't break any tack welds, you guys should see this 
caster gain be minimal at best. Alright, so we're back in the office here. I've got SolidWorks pulled up and I've got a model of an LS motor, 4060 transmission, and a Dana 44 axle. Um, all of which are placed pretty stinking close to where they need to be. Um, this is the same CAD model that I used for my V8 swap mounts. So you guys can see those all built inside there. This section here is where I put my third link uh, frame side mount. And if I rotate this around, you guys can see my third link on the axle would be kind of coming off of right here because it's going to go just inside of the, um, just in front of and just inside the frame mount, but just in front of the motor mount. So you guys can see kind of right here, a little bit to the, the right, the driver's side of the mount that's built into the model here. So this will get right here and then it goes basically through this little opening right here. I don't see any sort of oil pan clearance issues. I don't see any issues uh, clearancing the motor mount. Um, even if I did, that'll be minimal. I can trim that. But if I'm going to hit that, I'll probably be hitting the oil pan and something else. So I'll have bump stops coming off the bottom of the the uh, frame right here. Let's get out of SolidWorks here and let's go back into the Excel sheet. All right, so we're back into Excel and you guys can see this changed up a little bit. Now we're at 119, whereas before we were at like almost 170 or 180. And I want to see what it would take. This is the axle side. What if I drop this an inch? Well, look at that. It's now 105, almost 106. The closer you get to 100% um, means that you have the most desirable, on, on a calculator, the most desirable um, result in drivability. I would like to keep a sway bar on the truck, um, either front or rear or both and then just use some sort of disconnects, maybe modify uh, the ones that I make for the stock, uh, Colorado and H3s. But uh, yeah, looks like uh, the way that I've got this set up currently uh, will package properly and it will act, at least on air quotes paper, it'll at least act the way that I want it to, giving me the most desirable characteristics of drivability. So with that, We'll cut the video here, and I just want to say thank you guys for sticking around this build vlog and, and uh, giving me your guys' input. Genuinely, I want to know what type of content you guys want me to um, talk about. Um, super happy to learn anything, super happy to share anything that I know already, but I want to make sure that I'm creating videos that you guys want. If you're watching this, you are about only 30% of the people that even click on this video. So for that, I appreciate it, and uh, I want to ask you guys to tell me what kinds of videos you want. What topics on this build series do you want me to cover? Um, that's why this video has changed a little bit. Instead of just, here's what I did, I'm walking you guys through what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, the theory and, and the science and the, the geometry behind it. So appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.